Yo, when Colin family, here we are back again in the black abyss. Um, I wasn't even going to come to you guys this week. I was going to go ahead and take a week off, man. I, uh, I was under the weather, all kinds of stuff. Right. But look, I, I, I was hearing that this guy, Troy main Pope who got 14, well, 15 touches in week eight versus the Broncos, um, was clearing concussion protocols. And it made me want to go back to the well of the Chargers running offense to kind of just figure out what's going on here. I've done this multiple times. You guys haven't seen the videos because when I try to watch Justin Jackson and Joshua Kelly, what happens is I get the dozing off. Okay. Justin Jackson is extremely average, average. I should say Joshua Kelly is still trying to figure it out. Um, so I don't want to, I want to be kind, but I also don't know why. He was drafted in the third round of the, of the NFL draft. I'm just, I don't see it. So, I mean, just to be honest, I just get so bored with that. And I just haven't wanted to do that video. Okay. With that being said, also quick sidetrack before we get to the tape. I don't want this to be a long one. Um, I see all the comments and that's what I ask you guys to do. And I mean, I, I love it. Um, and I want to be able to bring you guys some of those videos in some cases. So let me address this really quick. The reason why you aren't seeing a lot of stuff about quarterbacks and receivers, that's a lot of tape to watch a lot more tape to watch. I should say, um, so receiver is actually my favorite position. I think I break that down better than any, than any other position, but, uh, just how much it takes for me to be able to, how much information I have to ingest to be able to do a quality breakdown. I don't want to, you know, half-ass this kind of stuff, you know what I mean? And, and leave stuff, leave details out, things of that nature and receivers play a lot of snaps, you know? So if I just show you the targets, I'm not showing you maybe other things that they did well on a play where they didn't see the ball, things of that nature. So it just takes longer. And it's the same concept with quarterback. Doesn't mean I'm not going to do that stuff or I, I don't work on that stuff. It's just that those videos just take longer. Things change week to week. I may end up not releasing and that I do a lot of stuff that you guys end up never seeing, right? Like just like Joshua Kelly and Justin Jackson, I've, I've been watching these guys all year. It's just, it would just be a boring video. So one day when I'm doing this full time, you'll you guys somewhere down the line, you're going to see quarterback, wide receiver, tight end, all that stuff a lot more, right? But right now it's just going to take some time. That's number one. Number two, I, I see the Ronald Jones and, and, and Leonard Fournette thing a lot. I mean, Here's the thing. It's, they like to give Fournette the ball in, in more obvious passing situations. If you ever think that Tampa Bay is going to go into a game script where they're going to be down like they did on Monday night, then Fournette is the guy. If that's not the case, then you'll never know who the guy is. And and, and you don't need my tape study for that. I'm, I'm Trust me, it is, it is, it is not <laughs> something that can be deciphered. Which guy will get the money? You just can't. You cannot. I, I would have to be Bruce Arians to be able to tell you guys which one of those guys you want to own. I really feel like it's a situation in fantasy where if you can just not play them, just don't play them. You know what I mean? I feel like that is all I really need to say about that situation. Or I really can. You know what I mean? Um, I just, I, you know, I just want to get that out the way. So links in the description for people who just are going to jump all of that stuff. I just now said, let's get back to what we're doing right here. But these first couple of minutes for me are like PSAs to, you know, my, my subscribers with that being said, like I said, looking at the chargers, I wanted to see what this guy Tremaine Pope is all about. And ended up being like, wow, you know what I mean? Because like I said, I'm not like, <sighs> but this is the first play that I saw of his. This is his first carry in week eight. And I was like, Hmm, that's not a bad cutback. You know, this is not a, this is not a bad run right here, you know, following right behind, uh, the pulling tackle, I believe and the guard, you know, getting itself up field, squeezing through that little hole and everything where not much was there against a, against a Broncos team that doesn't like to let anybody run the ball. I thought that was kind of in like, hmm, okay, not, not bad. So it made me say, okay, this is a guy with some juice, little small guy, you know what I mean? Fits that, fits that Eckler mold fits that uh Darren Sproles role from 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 uh, uh or mode from back in the day. So I, I I just thought it was interesting. But as I watched more, I became more intrigued with what I saw from Tremaine Pope. See what I really like about Tremaine Pope's running style as I play this video here is when he gets the ball, okay, 
he's patient, and then he just explodes. And this right here is 14 yards, and, and you see him falling forward. You see him being a real tough guy about it, and I really like that. And I feel like the Chargers are kind of missing that uh, out of Justin Jackson and out of Joshua Kelly. And I think Kalen Balaj brought some of that, but we'll get to Kalen Balaj. I, I like this run. You see defenders just falling all over the place, you know, little, little, little quick little jitterbug kind of guy. And this is the kind of stuff that I think, you know, is 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 – as I kept watching, it just makes me be like, man, I swear I want to take that chance on this on this young guy right here and just kind of see what happens. It's, this is a dice roll. I'm not showing this to be like, go pick him up right now and start him. You know, whew, uh, Jermichael Hasty was that kind of trap. Uh, Kyle Shanahan clearly does not seem to trust Jermichael Hasty to take on a full workload. We know in the Chargers offense that Nobody is going to get a full workload, but if if we can get another game of 29% of the snaps or so, 15 touches, I think that this kid is showing that he can do a little bit more with that than what the other healthy backs on the team can do with it at this point. Let's continue to look uh, look at some more. How about this run right here towards the end of the game? Just gets it, sees a hole, and and is just gone. You know, just gonna just gonna explode right through the hole for 26 yards. You know, you don't have to do a lot of of of, of breaking much down when a, when a guy's just running like that. You know what I mean? I like this run. I mean, what is there not to like about it? It's it's about when you have your head, when you have your head upfield and you're just aware and you have vision and you have explosion. And, and I like the way that he takes away angles from the linebackers. That shows that he has some nice game speed. Um, the, the, the way to be able to see speed on tape is to look at when guys have the angle to hit somebody. Let me actually pause that. I want to draw on this a little bit. The, the, the way to show, the way to be able to find speed on tape, and I'm going to pause it right here, is in a situation like this. Angle. angle he should be stopped this should be a gang tackle and and he should be done i mean this guy is, is off balance so that's not good but this guy you know this shoulder that's that's going up field you know it's it's going in the right direction you know so at the end of the day right i mean you're going to get the other shoulder going in that direction this should be a guy that's catching up right here right but what actually happens he can only get that one shoulder with that arm you know, that extends from that shoulder on him and the kid is gone. So, I mean, that's how you can see the speed and explosiveness on film. I don't see anybody else on the Chargers right now with Eckler Hurt who's doing that. Justin Jackson runs in sand. Josh Kelly runs in sand. Kalen Balaj has some pep in his step, but Kalen Balaj is bounces around the league for a reason. I think he's extremely talented. I loved him coming out of college. I thought he was going to be a star in the league. I think other talent evaluators in the NFL think that, which is why he stays on the team. But the issue ever since college with him is, is, is focus. Will he be focused enough next week to play well enough? Who knows? You know, he may decide to be a completely different guy, which is what, you know, just, just gets him out of the favor of coaches really quick. But this kid, you know, if he's healthy, I'm intrigued. Okay. So another thing to really love about this kid is that his, his usage, um, in this particular game as the passing down back is is really what you want to see. Justin Jackson is the guy who was playing that role for the team. Um, but Tremaine Pope kind of took that role in this game. I think this is also the game that Justin Jackson got hurt. Forgive me for uh, my lack of preparedness on, on being able to tell you that solidly. But when it's, when it's all said and done, that's something that you're going to like because the Chargers like to throw the ball, right? And Herbert is not shy to throw the ball to the running back like Tyrod Taylor was in, in, in his uh when he debuted for the team. And what I like about Tremaine Pope for a small guy, he is very feisty. So look at look at this play here. You you think I'm gonna run out of bounds? Nope. I'm gonna stiff arm you. I'm gonna spin back in bounds and try to get some more yards. And that and that is just and and you know, and he's feisty. I, I he got up. And I know for sure that he told that guy something about that. I'm, I'm going to show the show the play again because I like it. I just like, I like the feistiness about it. You know, I like that it's not just a lot of guys just go out of bounds, but nope, 
I'm going to stiff you, and I'm going to keep on going upfield. I like it. Get them on uh, – get them in a situation like this here. Um, second and 16, right? We're going to get the uh, – that little angle route that the Chargers love to run with the running backs. I've seen every guy that they have at running back run this route. I'm not going to say that he he ran it the best, but I think he did a decent job of setting up the linebacker, getting himself a little bit of space. He gets, you know, he didn't he didn't like how he gets tackled there. That could be a penalty. But again, like I said, you know, so it seems like a little bit extra is going on there. Feisty dude, he not having that. You know what I mean? He's going to get right in your face and tell you about that. I'm. <laughs> I like it. Okay, on this play, of course, lined up in the backfield, but gets a little angle route that he runs, um, which, like I said, we see a lot from the Chargers. But it's the one, you know, one hand, snatch it, get up field, get some extra yards, you know. I really like what he brings to the Chargers. I don't think that they have this element. I think that without Eckler, they're missing this element, a guy that – really is made for the passing game and who can give you that explosiveness out of the backfield. Also an extremely patient runner as well, which I really, really like. We'll take a quick second to look at the two other guys who will look to get touches uh, this week against Miami. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm feeling like if it's realistic that this kid can get another 15, probably stretching it to say 20, but if he can get another 15, oh, nudge it to 20 touches uh, this week against Miami, I think in a deeper league, I would take a shot. I would, I would take a shot just as much as anybody who wants to take a shot on Kelly or Balaj. I don't see why you can't go here. I think the projections for him are extremely low. Uh, his ownership is extremely low, but or maybe it's just for a, uh, for a DFS, you know what I mean? If you're doing daily fantasy, I think it, it could be a play there. I just think that this could be an overlooked element because he got hurt in this game. But I think if he doesn't get hurt and maybe he's on a trajectory like this, then maybe that ends up being completely different and he's a hot name right now. Um, so I, I think that this may be an opportunity to get him before that, you know, now that it looks like he's fully healthy, been practicing fully all week. Okay, but like I said, um, Tremaine Pope, very intriguing, but Kalen Balaj played well uh, last week against the Raiders. Now, I think Denver's front is better, better against the run, obviously. Um, that's backed up statistically and from a fantasy perspective. And the Chargers really did dominate the Raiders' defensive line in this particular game. So a lot of Kalen Balaj's runs looked a lot like this 14 yard run, which is why I'm not going to show you a lot of Kalen Balaj, but it was a lot of these kind of patient, just opportunities to just bounce around and find open space. And I think he did it really well. I really can't, it's really nothing that I can take away from Kalen Balaj in this game. Also got four targets, uh, caught the ball three times on those four targets. Um, so he had a, he had a very decent game. I think that at this particular point, we're talking about healthy backs. I think Tremaine Pope to me looks like he could be the Chargers' best healthy back with Caleb Balage number two, um, which I know like he's a, he, you know, he's, he's a meme in fantasy to this point, but he, but he played well for the Chargers last week. The thing is consistency is his biggest issue which is due to just focus and maturity and the question is has he really learned his lesson now he's on like his third or fourth team this year alone i believe um we'll see but you know he was decent now i want to show you guys the touchdown run because what's interesting to me about this touchdown run is it's fourth and two and a guy doesn't get touched going into the end zone i mean Nobody gets his hand on him until he's two or three yards. Uh, I think about two yards out from the end zone. I think the, I think this is a, again, a microcosm of what I saw all day against the Raiders where a lot of times Kalen Balazs just really was able to have his way. Um, and, and the effort just was, was not great. Um, it just, it, it really only Joshua Kelly seemed to Joshua Kelly seemed to be running against a completely different team. Um, and I, and I'll show you some of the things that, that some of the mistakes that he's been making all year long, been seeing it on his tape all year long in this game. But I, I just don't know if I can trust this, what I saw because the Raiders were so soft against the run, 
um, in this game unless you were Joshua Kelly for certain moments. So I think what's been plaguing Joshua Kelly. So I think what's been plaguing Joshua Kelly all year long is that holes open up sometimes in this offense in places where they aren't designed to open up. And Joshua Kelly is always kind of going full speed in the direction that the play is supposed to go. But a lot of the Chargers runs are stretch zone and things of that nature. So a lot of it is really on the running back to kind of see lanes that open up on the backside or the front side, depending on where the play is going. And then every once in a while, they can happen right in front of you, right up the middle of the field, which is going to happen here. You're going to get a huge lane open up. Now we're going to get a defender coming across that, right? Because he's reading the motion of the play going to this direction. But just like I showed you, uh, when we talked about angles, uh, when I was showing you Tremaine Pope, if, if Joshua Kelly notices that and head straight up field, I feel pretty strongly that he beats this defensive lineman cutting across the formation. So with no further ado, I'm going to actually play this play. Look. Watch, watch as he gets the ball. This is what I'm saying right here. You have the guy that's cutting across the formation coming here, but this linebacker is moving in this direction because his eyes are here, right? This linebacker is also, you know, because you have you've had this muddled handoff to, 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 to make linebackers kind of drop back or step up. You're trying to get some kind of reaction out of them. You're making them read this play. And because of that, you only have one guy who could possibly affect you. And I understand his back is to it. He's going in this direction, but at the end of the day, if he sees this, He's going to get a big gain at the end. Of, well, it may not be a big game, but what I can tell you is that he's going to get more than three yards, which is all he gets as he keeps trying to find ways to bounce this play outside. And then he gets smacked at the end of it, which he always seems to be getting smacked in this particular game. I mean, he was just getting hammered on so many of his touches. The, the Mack truck size hole, is even more like, look how big this hole is. And I'm not, like I said, okay, your back is to the play. I, I understand, but your head could be here. You know, it's, it's, it's no reason why it can't be. I, I, I almost feel like you just have to be able to feel that this is happening. And at the end of the day, get up field. You guys may disagree, but that's that's something that I feel pretty strongly because what he ends up doing is bouncing and bouncing and just getting three yards. And and I think this is why, as much as the coaching staff wants to validate this third this third round pick, he just continues to end up being on the bottom of the totem pole and touches in his offense. I mean, I, I just think that that's generally not what the Chargers are looking for. Um, now here's another unfortunate situation of a missed hole, um, on a carry right here. So this is what Kalen Balaj was doing all day long against the Raiders. Okay. Kalen Balaj was being patient, finding gaps like this one. Okay. And, <laughs> and getting through them. I mean, it just pretty much that simple. But Joshua Kelly has missed these kind of holes literally all year long. Again, I've been watching this team a lot this year. I just, I felt like any video I would have done would have been negative. Like it is right now, as I start to talk about Joshua Kelly, because so much of this stuff shows up when you watch him or Justin Jackson, he's, he feel it's, it's as if he's determined to run into the back of his lineman sometimes. And th the reality is, is that, there's there's yards to be gotten on this play that he just finds a way not to get. We're going to watch this in, in, in slow motion here. This is stretch zone. He has to start being more patient and stop kind of predetermining where he's going to go with the ball because look, 
you can look at the results of a play and say, well, this happened and this ha- and, all, and all this other stuff and, and, and whatnot, right? But if he's pressing the line of scrimmage here instead of choosing where he's going already, he can cut back into that lane and he's and he's through that hole before it's muddled. This is this is what everybody means when they talk about pressing the line of scrimmage, putting the foot foot in the ground. He shouldn't even have just his whole body at this position at, at this particular time. Isn't really how it should be. It should be he should be squared to the line of scrimmage with his head up the field, ready to put a foot in the ground and explode it. He already put his foot in the ground, and is and therefore his body is going in. A direction away from where the hole is so it's just now he's trying another you know jab step to get away from defenders that he could have got away from if he just picked the right the right hole is um this is an inf- unfortunate problem that this that this rookie running back is having and at, at the end of the day you know when it rains it pours so look joshua kelly is going to get a you know little play action he's going to get a nice little catch tries to jump over a guy that's standing right up. It's just like he's been so inept at breaking tackles in open space that it just, you get to this point where it's just kind of like, and he was getting hit a lot in this game that you're just, what are you doing? Josh, what are you doing? You know, it's like you're, you're risking hurting yourself at the end of the day. So look, I, I don't want to, you know, dog Joshua Kelly or anything like that. That's just my way of saying to you guys that he still has some uh, some room to grow. He's going to get his touches in his offense. He ended up with five catches. Uh, four of them came on the Chargers' final drive where they were, to, where they were trying to uh, come back to win that game, a uh, game that they thought that they had won when it was all said and done. Um, so, I mean, his involvement is not going to go anywhere. I don't think Belage's involvement is going to go anywhere, but I'm doing this video to say that this this guy that nobody seems to be talking about, Tremaine Pope, if he's going to have a role, you know, it could be it could be that he's a guy that helps you win a week if, if you're bold enough to go that way or if you're desperate enough to go that way. Look, I have so many running back injuries um, that this is what kind of sent me to this tape this week. I was really just doing this for myself, and then I decided I'm going to go ahead and share it with you guys because, hey, I'm, I might – I might decide to go ahead and throw this guy in my lineup if 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 I can't get a start out of Matt Breida, if I can't get a start out of Chris Carson, because uh, that's where I am right now. Have Miles Gaskin, he's hurt, you know. Um, so, you know, these are just kind of things that I was just seeing. Wanted to go ahead and share it with you guys. I hate that this still probably is going to end up being a long video, uh, but I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I am studying, like I said, trying to get you guys's. Uh, uh, request out. I asked for them, so I, I, I want to try to uh, to honor uh, them as I can. The those that I don't, I'm sorry. But going forward, um, I'm going to be giving you guys more than than you can handle. But obviously, it's going to take some time. We're going to have to continue growing. So the the more you guys want to see, the more I need you to share these videos, like them, subscribe, tell your friends to subscribe. I don't like begging for that kind of stuff, but. Um, in order for me to really take it to the next level, uh, that's what we're going to need so that I can, you know, actually afford to devote that amount of time uh, to it uh, that it will require. So, again, thank you guys for, for everything. Uh, thanks for the support that, uh, that I receive and for all the new people. Hope you subscribe and you like it. Peace. I'm out.